Are you ready to be blown away? Hello folks, Scientific Health with a K here. There are a lot of myths out there concerning weight loss. Let us debunk some of them. I am sure you have heard this over and over again. Carbohydrates are not your enemy, but the excess amount of carbohydrates in your daily intake that creates the energy surplus. So it's all about having more than needed by the body that makes you fat. Uh, there is no need actually, there is no need. I feel the need to say something more. If you are hitting your maintenance calories and macros, be assured you will not get fat from carbohydrates. Weight loss is never the same as fat loss, okay? And this happens when you wake up in the morning after taking a pee pee and you step on the scale. Sometimes you will see the scale rocketing high up in the sky. Of course, you cannot gain fat that quickly. I mean, overnight. Most of the time, the water weight is the criminal behind the high numbers on the scale. As a matter of fact, it's all about the carbs and fiber intake that really fluctuates your water weight regulation. Let's take this example. Some people follow a carnivore diet and they cut back on carbs. Immediately, within a week, they start losing 2 to 4 pounds and they take that as fat loss. Well, in fact, that is water weight loss, not fat loss. If you want to try it, Try having a pizza one day prior to your weigh in and see the numbers. And if you have a very strenuous workout, such as leg workout, I am sure the next day you will have a higher number on the scale. This is a theory that claims if you skip breakfast, you will become fat. Surprisingly, most of this research is funded by breakfast company brands. I have talked about this in a previous video but I'm just gonna mention it in here. Having small meals throughout the day will not boost your metabolism and will not make you lose fat faster. If you wanna learn more, you can check the video's link in the description box. Cutting the consumption of gluten from your diet will not cause you to lose fat while the numbers of the calories stay the same. If you cut gluten out from your diet and you lose weight, that's because you are decreasing the number of calories consumed per day. It is not because you are consuming gluten-free foods. So, decreasing the number of your calories is also known as calorie deficit, which means you are having less calories than your body needs and thus you are losing fat. Oh, that's a good one. Sugar does not make you fat, but rather the overconsumption of it that puts you in calorie surplus. Of course, it is recommended to cut on sugary foods, but eliminating them is a big no-no. Because it's all about increasing your pleasure as well as increasing your dopamine levels. Let's say you want to have a chocolate cake. It is delicious, I know. You might want to consider calculating the calories of this cake into your total calorie intake daily. And thus, I don't see any problem in here, as long as it is part of your calorie intake. We have heard this over and over again. If you want to lose fat, you don't have to starve yourself, okay? That is a fact. The key here is making small changes to your diet and exercise habits. Here are some tips. Increase NEAT, non-exercise thermogenesis, such as walking. Try to walk as much as you can. Try having 70% clean, unprocessed food. Reduce your calorie intake. Let's start with 20%. If you want to lose fat and see some definition in your body, then you might consider exercising. These are simple tips but they are easy to implement in your daily schedule. Inadequate calorie intake will lead to deficiencies and malnutrition. 
I have talked about this in certain videos. You can also check the video's links in the description box. Please be careful. And yeah, one more thing. Please choose something that you can follow and adhere to on the long run. Losing fat is all about creating negative energy balance. As I said before, if you want to lose fat, you should have fewer calories than you are expending. And this is also known as, you know it, calorie deficit. If you want to reach the holy grail, you might want to consider including resistance training that will increase your basal metabolic rate while at rest. I am not saying that you shouldn't do cardio at all. As a matter of fact, the best approach to lose fat is to do both resistance training and cardio. Many people believe artificial sweeteners are worse than sugar itself because they trigger insulin response that leads to weight gain and type 2 diabetes. This is what they claim because they are not following the research literature. Until now, there is no clear-cut evidence that artificial sweeteners increase appetite or food intake or trigger insulin response more than sugar. But just remember that these artificial sweeteners are low in energy. A meta-analysis showed that switching from high caloric sugars to low calorie sweeteners resulted in significant reduction in BMI, waist circumference, and fat mass. Of course, more research is needed, but we have seen so far replacing sugary drinks with low calorie sweeteners may help you in weight loss. So folks, it's all about calculating your calories. And one more thing, there is no strong evidence that artificial sweeteners have detrimental effects on your health. So we might as well just wait and see and take everything into moderation. Check the studies in the description box. Check other things that were already debunked and stay awesome.